you guys are happy and healthy i understand it's tough to stay home and changing from day pajamas to evening pajamas but it's something that we have to do to keep safe please stay out stay away from going to stores if not necessary only go out for essential items stay home we're praying for everybody we're hoping everybody's doing great keeping nice and close with your family god bless you all can't wait to see you guys Bye. Bye-bye. Good morning, my friends. I am so glad to come here and to greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus, our resurrected Christ. He is still on the throne. Pastor Sangram here. I'm so glad to be with you and praise the Lord with you. You're welcome to join our service this morning. Thank you, Brother Mike, so much for leading us into that wonderful song. Brother Brandon have uh, some uh, some more songs to lead us into praise and worship. This morning I just want to greet you and let you know uh, the North Shore Assembly of God offers Bible studies, online Bible studies on Tuesday morning and Tuesday evening. Wednesday night we have prayer Bible study and Thursday morning and Thursday evening we have a Bible study still online and as we still have Iranian church on Saturday night and uh, uh, the Indian church on Sunday evening so any of these services you can join with us and praise the Lord with us and if you need information please call us or email us and we'll let you know for right now let's celebrate the victory let's celebrate the risen Christ and these two shall pass pretty soon we're all going to get together and worship the Lord and I cannot wait until we gather together in the sanctuary God bless you let's worship the Lord amen
God is greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other, our God is healer, awesome in power, our God, our God. Oh, 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 oh. oh, oh, oh.
this point in time, we will be giving our tithings and offerings. You could either give online at northshoreassembly.com or mail in a check to 9779 Gross Point Road, Skokie, Illinois. Lockdown is the sermon title today. Have you ever felt that? Have you ever felt that you were locked down? Have you ever felt like you are alone, scared? Have you ever felt like the entire world is in a pandemic? Of course you have felt that way. In fact, all of us felt that way because we are in a lockdown right now. The whole world is in lockdown hiding from an invisible enemy. In fact, the government has said, we need to continue to quarantine ourselves. The nation is in a desperate situation. The whole world is locked down. When you hear that news, it is normal to uh, be depressed or disappointed or discouraged. We have this new normal where we spend all our time at home or only communicating through the telephones or maybe internet. It is strange. I hear so many comments about people being depressed. Depression and disappointment, discouragement will attack anybody or everybody in times like this. It doesn't matter how much money you have or how intelligent you are, how brave you are, there will be times you will go into a fear mode or a panic mode. Uh, but the Bible teaches how to deal with fear, how to deal with depression or loneliness. When we go through times like this, God using his prophets, King David, so many times he helps us calm down. Don't you think? For instance, David wrote a, a peculiar, a particular praise and a cry to God. Psalm 142, when he was in a familiar, uh, similar uh, situation, he was in a type of lockdown and he wrote this. He was in a cave with a, a just a few of his loyal friends, trusted friends, but right outside of uh, the cave, there were 3,000 trained soldiers with King Saul who are waiting to get him. They are, they are after David's life. They want to kill David. Does it seem familiar to you? The virus, the coronavirus, the invisible enemy is uh, threatening the whole world. If you come out, I will attack you and I'll kill you, the virus says. The virus has no mercy. It will attack whomever it meets. Whether you are young or old, or rich or poor, it doesn't matter. The virus is threatening us. And that's how our spiritual enemy acts as well. It doesn't matter who you are to the spiritual enemy. It doesn't matter you're a scholar. He is there to kill and destroy. And he has trained army poised to attack God's creation. But God has sent his word to us today to remind us that we are not alone. He has sent his word today to show that we can cry aloud, cry aloud to the great I am who hears us and he is our refuge. God is our refuge. So, so we can learn from this psalm how to defeat this coronavirus which is our invisible enemy right now we can we can be equipped to defeat the invisible enemies of our depression loneliness discouragement 
Are you depressed? Are you lonely? One of my favorite characters uh, in the Bible, David, teaches us uh, five lessons through this uh, beautiful psalm, Psalm 142. It goes, I cry aloud to the Lord, to the Lord for mercy. I pour out before him my complaint. Before him I tell my trouble. When my spirit goes, when my spirit grows faint within me, it is you who watch over my way. In the path where I walk, people have hidden a snare for me. Look and see, there is no one at my right hand. No one is concerned for me. I have no refuge. No one cares for my life. I cry to you, Lord. I say, you are my refuge, my portion in the land of the living. Listen to my cry, for I am in de desperate need. Rescue me from those who pursue me, for they are too strong for me. Set me free from my prison, that I may praise your name. Then the righteous will gather about me because of your goodness to me. David teaches us five lessons from this scripture. Beautiful Psalm. Number one, verses one and two. In the time of sorrow, God is hearing your prayers. God is hearing your prayers. Verses three, when you feel despair, God knows where you are. God knows where you are. Verses, verses 4, in seasons of loneliness, God feels your pain. God feels your pain. Verse 5, when you are running for your life, remember, God is your refuge. Verses 6 and 7, in times of fear, fear of people or diseases or life struggles, remember, God will set you free through the praises of his name. How? Through the praises of his name. Number one, God is hearing your prayer. In a lockdown situation, remember that God is hearing your prayer. Verses one and two, there is a time when prayer is worship, but then there is a time when prayer is warfare. I am sure you know what I'm talking about. In times of sorrow, God wants us to not to be quiet, but cry out. Cry your heart out to Him. God wants you to call upon heaven and on earth. Shake them down. Look at verse 1. In Hebrew, it means, I lift my voice so loud like the cry in the battleground. Those of you uh, pray quietly or uh, reservedly, you probably don't understand what I'm, what I'm talking about. David is advising, let it all out. Let it all out for crying out loud because God wants to hear your prayer. What we can learn from this scripture from verses 1 and 2, when you are depressed because you are alone, depressed because you are disappointed, don't just be polite to God, but cry out to God. David was depressed. David was scared, but he was crying out to God. In fact, Jesus, after a long time of David, Jesus teaches a lesson to his disciples, and he tells them to, uh, this is how we should be praying, praying constantly, and then he teaches them a parable in chapter, Luke chapter 18. In a certain town, Jesus said, there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared what people think about him. And there was a widow in that town who kept coming to him and asking, uh, uh, hear my plea, uh, grant, uh, uh, grant me justice against my adversaries. For some time, this guy refused, but finally he said to himself, even though I don't fear God or care what people think about me, yet because this woman, widow, keeps bothering me, I will see that she gets justice so that she went, she won't come, eventually come back to me and she, so, so that she won't bug me. And the Lord said to them, listen to what this unjust judge says. And will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones 
who cry out to him day and night. Are you crying out to God? Jesus is teaching to his disciples, cry out to God. Cry out to God. Speak up. Unfortunately, we do this in reverse. We go to people and try to try out and we cry out to people. God is saying, don't do that to people, but pray to God. David is teaching, cry out to God. Cry, cry aloud to God who answers your prayers, not people. Later on, Paul says that in Philippians chapter 4, verse 5 and 6, let your gentleness be evident to all. But verse 6, uh, he says, don't be anxious about anything, but in everything, he said, in everything, in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to who? To the people? No, to God. There comes a point when people or government cannot help us. People cannot bring uh, what we need. He cannot, they cannot bring you out of our despair. Only God can. Call on Him. Cry your heart out to God. Put your trouble at His feet. Verbalize your need to Him. Stop talking to people about bad, how bad this coronavirus is. Quit spreading the panic to others. Yes, take precautions, but talk to God. Explain to Him how you're, pray, how you're praying with your prayer. Pray until your prayers are answered. God's answers are always there. Sometimes he says yes. Sometimes he says no. Most often he says not yet. God knows where you are. Point number two, God knows where you are. When you are locked down, remember God knows where you are. He knows what you're going through. David was in a cave afraid. Why? Because there are 3,000 uh, train men are waiting, waiting for his life. I'd be scared too. Remember David's story. What happened to David when he was 16 years age? God promised him that he would become a king. Then now he is running away. What? Why did God forget him? Remember Samuel came and put oil on his head and David is not a king yet. Now he's running away. <clears throat> Does that mean God changed his mind? No, God did not change his mind. God did not. God is waiting for David to come to his sense. God is not through with David yet. God is trying to teach that David's dependence, David's dependency must be upon God, not upon people. David's life is a portrait of a typical Christian. Brothers and sisters, we have the salvation of God, the protection of God, but quite often the enemy tries to scare and intimidate us like this, like this pandemic, this lockdown. But I'm here to tell you, he cannot destroy you just like Saul could not destroy David because God's purpose for David wasn't fulfilled yet. You will not die until God's time, until God's done with you. Remember Psalm 139 verse 16, all the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them come to be. Remember this. Remember this when you feel afraid or panicky. Remember that ultimately you are not going to be defeated because God is with you and he is the victor. We may have battles, but he has won the war. We are the victors. When you're running away in despair, just stop and remember God's, God has anointed you. Remember that God has anointed you. God has fulfilled you. God gave you Holy Spirit. Remember that. Remember, we are going to see him soon, one way or the other. If you, if you are a born again believer, remember, we are at God's hands. But if you're afraid, if you're running away, run to the word of God. The very words of God are the right there with you at your house, at your lock, in your lockdown, on your phones and your books. I know sometimes 
we, when we're going through this kind of despair, we don't think of all this. But we need to look at God's written words. The hope and the power is in His word. David's teaching, David is teaching us that we better remember God's promises. Only God's promise will lift us up. Number three, point number three, God feels your pain. Verse four, God feels your pain. When you are going through this lockdown experience, remember, God feels your pain. Although David has loyal friends like uh, Abishai and different people who would literally die for him, he was so blinded by his fear, he says, there is nobody to help me. There is no one. If I look at my right hand side, there is nobody. You know, not only David who felt this way in the Bible, there are other prophets, men of God felt that way. Remember Elijah? He felt that way too. That he said, God, I'm done. There is no one to help me take me home. But I want here to tell you, God feels, God sees your anguish. God is not abandoning you. Please know this. He has, he hears your prayer. He is not far from you. He is near you. Do you know why David said, uh, there is nobody on my right hand side? In the judicial system of the day, the advocate would uh, stand or sit uh, at the right hand side of the accused. And David has nobody because he was in a cave. Do you know who is our advocate now? Do you feel like that? Do you feel like there is nobody for you? In times of need, you're counting on somebody and you couldn't find them. Someone you trusted but they betrayed you. Do you feel alone? Did you know that, that what the Bible said that about Jesus? Jesus is at the right hand side of the Father. He is interceding for us at the throne. He is our advocate. People may leave us alone. People may abandon us. People may say that we will help you and they would, they would betray you. Even pastors may say, oh, we will pray for you. They may betray you. But Jesus is interceding for you. God feels your pain. Remember that. God feels your pain. Fourthly, God is your portion. When you are going, when you are going through the lockdown, remember that God is your portion, just as David said, you are my portion. The word portion here means the highest prized treasure. For David, God is the highest prized treasure. When you are going through, is God is your highest prized treasure? Does he come before everything? Does he come before your profession? Your family, your children, your grandchildren, your business. Here is, a good, here is a big one right now. Is God more important to you than your physical health, your mortal soul? Does he come before you or does he get the leftovers of your life? Ah, but for David, he says, God is my highest prized treasure. He is my portion, even in the lockdown. He says, he is my treasure. If you're suffering from COVID-19, if this is causing you all sorts of depression, despair, ask Jesus to realign your heart, to remember that he is your portion. He is your need. He, when, when you, when all, everything else is gone, when, when everything else is going against you, if you depend upon him, if you say, Jesus, you are my portion, that very, very word comforts you. Is God your highest treasure? Point number five, verses six and seven. When you are going through this lockdown experience, remember that God will free you from all your fears. God will free you from all your fears. How? Through the praises. He will free you from all your fears through the praises of his name. Nothing can lift you up. The scripture says God is enthroned upon your praise. And guess what? The devil cannot, cannot, will not be able to come to God's presence. 
Let me tell you, when you feel there is no hope, you begin to pray. When there is no, when you feel like there is no hope, you begin to sing out loud. When you feel you are locked down, you begin to give glory to God. God is going to lift you up out of your fears. You remain faithful to God. God will lift you up out of your lockdown. God will be glorified through your faithfulness. And He will bless you and He will victoriously deliver you through the praises. One day when we begin to praise Him, right in the middle of our cave experience, right in the middle of our lockdown experience, right in the middle of the struggles that you are going through, one day when you begin to praise His name, one day when we learn to praise His name and seek His face, He will lift you up. The rejoicing will come. Are you praising God? I'm the fount of every blessing Tune my heart to sing thy grace Streams of mercy never ceasing Call for songs of loud Shore from the Farquhar family. We hope you're doing well. Hello. 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 Hello, North Shore from the Farquhar family. We hope you're doing well.